Hey there, thanks for watching the video today. What I've got is one of these little, um, just an off-brand walking foot manual crank sewing machines. I bought this one off of Amazon. I believe it was about $140 when I purchased it. And um, it's pretty, pretty powerful. It's got a good heavy flywheel on it. So once you get going, even in thicker materials, it'll keep going. Um, got Ladybird over there trying to get famous. And this has really been kind of a game changer for our, our uh, fledgling leather business. I initially started out hand stitching leather and I just wasn't good enough at it. There are some excellent hand stitchers. There's a cat, cat trying to get famous too. Um, some really good leather stitchers who can do it by hand and do it quickly. I am not one of those people bought this machine um mainly just because it was cheap enough that i could actually afford um, to get a machine like i said i think it was about 140 dollars and it's been um been really a great a great tool added to our collection since then i've bought some um some electrified versions which are great for thin leather working but when you get to this this thicker material which i don't know what this counts as for for ounce wise but it's it's over an eighth of an inch thick. And on this particular project, I've got it over three layers thick, um, plus a, a thin waxed leather on top of that doubled up. So you've got four to five layers of leather that you're going through. And my my electric machine, even if you tried to hand crank the, the wheel over, it had a whole lot of trouble doing it. And I was breaking strings constantly, breaking thread. This machine, you will occasionally break thread. But it's got a couple unique features that allow you to do things that you just really can't do easily with most um, most inexpensive electrified machines. A couple of the trade-offs you've got here. The heaviest thread I've I've been able to successfully run on this machine is 420D slash three. I'm not sure exactly what that equates to in in metric or U.S. weights, but 420 slash three bonded nylon is the heaviest thread that I've been able to run on here without any issues. That's the bobbin that it uses underneath in the machine, which works fine for lightweight threads. I apologize for that poor cat me on. She weighs about 500 pounds and she just always wants more food. I'm trying to put her on a diet, but she is not happy about that diet. Anyway, this came off of um, our sail right style machine. And this is what's on this little manual machine. So you run out of thread quickly. This machine came with four or five uh, bobbins. I believe it came with five bobbins. So you can have four backups and one on the machine. They they wind pretty quickly. I do not use the little, the little winding setup this machine came with. I just took a screw, tapered the end a little bit. Let's see where you, where the focus is, and these bobbins have a tapered hole in the middle, so figure out which way the which way the taper works. Put that in a drill gun, you can wind this thing in about ten seconds. That's how I prefer to wind these, rather than putting it on the manual winder and and winding your thread. It's going to take you a lifetime to get enough thread wound on there. So. I don't like their small bobbins. That's mainly what I'm getting at. Otherwise, this thing that I'm aware of hasn't had any pieces break. It came with a fair number of spare moving parts. So if they do break, they should be easy to, to pop a new one on. But quite honestly, even if you had to throw this thing away and buy a new one once this thing did break, it's not very expensive. You should be able to pay for that with two or three projects pretty easily. So tiny bobbins, that's a huge trade-off over most other machines. It would be quite beneficial to have a bobbin more in line with the sail right bobbins which are they're bigger in in both respects they're quite a bit larger in diameter and they hold a heck of a lot more thread so i think that's a standard i'm wanting to say it's a size 15 the one that's um the, off the sail right sewer get that out of the way tiny bobbins that's that's the worst of it just really tiny bobbins and the tolerances are not great on this in terms of where the the moving parts are with the exception of the needle the needle tolerance seems to be exceptional that needle goes exactly where it needs to go every single time i haven't had any issues with that needle walking side to side when it's not intended to get some light on here these little led lights little usb led lights are another one of those 
real big um, productivity improvements on our projects because you can see what you're doing so you can move a little bit more quickly okay let's get going and i've got again that's the 420-3 uh, 618 i believe pound thread seems to be in focus Here's another neat little feature. You can turn the walking head if you run out of room behind your machine, if you start to get too close to your wall. This walking foot, especially on waxed leather, is not doesn't have a lot of real powerful pull to it. So if you if you bottom out on the back here and you start hitting something, you're just going to sink every thread right in the same hole. That walking foot will just slide on the material. But it's pretty aggressive. The teeth are are pretty rough on there. So for most leather, it doesn't have a, tr a problem pulling it. You may have to clean the leather up a little bit, brush it and polish it to get rid of the teeth marks off of this um, from the sewing machine here. Okay, see if I can finish this out. Not a lot of room behind my machine. No room at all back there. Ooh, messing that baby up a little bit. doesn't like to be repositioned I will say that so this next one might really might really be a mess up get that last thread right where I want it Now you can raise your, your walking foot and you can actually go backwards with this. Drop her back down. And back stitch a couple of times. Get a little slack there. All these little teeth marks will come out pretty easily. This is a, a heavily waxed leather, so you can rub a lot of these marks out after you're done with this. But altogether, that followed the line I was trying to follow pretty well. Usually I'll use a, a heat gun or you can use a hair dryer to remelt the wax in the surface here and just kind of rub it in by hand or if you have a, a little hair brush, like a horse hair brush. You can finish that up. Here's the back side. Sometimes I have noticed that the back side, the threads won't follow nearly as straight a line as the front side, especially on thicker leather. That needle might tend to want to walk as it goes through the leather a bit. But not too shabby for $140. That sewing machine's worth every cent you off of here where you can see what we're doing i will say mounting this thing uh, was a huge improvement because the stand it came with was a little tripod stand just totally worthless in my opinion so i've mounted this to a little piece of 2 by 12 and you you really do need to put some kind of a shim block underneath it to support it because it's um 
being that it's one of these cylinder head units, it doesn't have any support out here um, from the manufacturer. So a little a little block under here to support it, since there's only I believe one hole for a bolt on the back side to go into the into the board you're attaching it to. Other than that, I haven't really done anything at all to improve it. I've I've sanded um, sanded and polished some edges here so they don't tear up um, the leather or snag material going through. That's really about all there is to it. I, I may have adjusted a few of the, the, the thread length adjustment. I forget where exactly that is. I believe that's this, um, this bolt under here is your, your thread length attachment or adjustment bolt. I've adjusted that. I've adjusted some of the tensions, but it didn't, it didn't need it from the start. Thanks for watching. This is the uh, manual, I believe it's a, a cobbler sewing machine purchased off Amazon about $150. If this review was at all helpful to you, or if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave those in the comments below, and we will try to get to that for you. Thank you.